There we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Look at this handsome devil we got in the house here. <laughs> this is Mr. Red Pill Thor. Thor, how are you doing, mate? Well, thank you for having me on, Sterling. I'm glad to be here. Good. Now, uh, I would a uh, bit of bit of context for everyone watching. I was supposed to be at Thor's house earlier today, and then on the way, about it got exactly halfway uh, out of LA towards his place, and I had car trouble, and I had to get towed back <laughs> to the valley. It's like the the Porno Valley keeps pulling me back in. It won't let me escape Thor. Ah, that's the problem. It's a giant vortex, buddy. Uh, it You're is. gonna have to escape someday. Yeah. So we'll take a rain. We'll take a rain check on that. Oh, well, absolutely, we'll take a rain check. And I was so looking forward to it. We're, we're gonna shoot some guns. We're gonna blow up some tatterite. Uh, maybe ride a Harley or two. It was gonna be a fucking. And, may, and I was definitely gonna squeeze a workout, a kettlebell workout in with you. I, I was like, this is gonna be a lads' day. And then I spent half the day on the side of the fucking highway. So that is what it is. Welcome to California. Yeah, welcome to California. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, thought maybe for people who are uh, coming in from you know from my channel, they might not be familiar with uh, who you are. So maybe sure. you can give them a bit of a background about like, uh, yeah, like your career, what you've done, uh, yeah. where you're at, where you're at now, uh, and what you kind of like, uh, what you like to teach and coach guys about, and then we'll move on to the topic I wanted to uh, pick your brain about today. Sure, why not? Uh, I've been uh, somewhat active in the manosphere or so the red pill space for maybe about only 10 months or so. Uh, although um, I've been red pill for quite some time. Uh, my Essentially, I, I was raised here in California. I wasn't born here. I was born in Texas. And uh, I spent most of my career as a power lineman. And those are the guys that go out and climb the giant poles and restore power and or the towers, or even in my case, I would fly on helicopters and jump off onto the high voltage lines, uh, wow. 500,000 volts and below with a steel suit on. It's a Faraday suit, get bond on. And, and I taught guys how to do that. And that's where uh, I started teaching uh, ropes, knots, how to do this line work, uh, live line, bare hand work, how to be safe in this industry because I was severely injured in 1991 in this industry. I got hung up in 12,000 volts and you can see the scars on my hands. So wow. I was teaching these young men, many of them young, uh, when I say young, below 35, yep. trying to improve their career. It's a very high paying career, but it's very dangerous. I'll bet but, yeah, I'll ask, you, get, you get danger pay as, as you in really do. Yeah. But it's worth it. And it, it's almost a male exclusive industry. I mean, less than 0.03% are female. And there's reasons for that. It has nothing to do with anything political. It's just extremely hard. And the way our body belts are designed is very uncomfortable on a woman's body physically because of her hip shape. So because of that and the, and the need that you have to use upper body strength to literally hoist yourself around, mm. it tends to be all male. So as I'm teaching these young men, half of what I'm teaching them, I end up in the last seven to eight years is about life lessons. Hmm. Just, and I noticed this, there was a shift. I'm not just teaching them about career, but I, I, I'm talking about their girlfriends, the issues in their life, what's bothering them. And just essentially I was becoming this father figure to a lot of these guys coming up and that's okay. I had mentors too. I had a great mentor that actually saved my life when I got burned. Hell of a guy. He was a long range recon patrol guy in vietnam and he'd kill people and yet wow. you know this was my mentor he was a solid man um and so i wanted to pass that forward for sure so today what i do is is i am involved in the uh, men's empowerment network and i offer uh what i like to say is men's lifestyle advisement advisor is what i am guys that need some advisement on a men's lifestyle and it it, it varies it can be uh, a lot of it's been lately is long-term relationship coaching because, you know, relationships do go stale after a while. I personally have had issues with relationships long-term before, but I do have a 27 year marriage that's going stronger than ever before. So that's something right there that guys want to know what the secret is. And there's not that there's any one given secret, but there's a lot. And a lot of it has to do with attraction and training guys. So I do offer some of that added values to look for when you're looking. A lot of young guys are looking for a long-term relationship when they probably shouldn't be yet. You mm -hmm. know, they kind of need to get some more male experience 
And I've talked to guys about that. This is too soon for you. Just wait. When yeah. And when you do that, you're not expecting it. Boom. There it is. Right. Yeah. They're in a so rush. Have, like, like they're under 30. They're in like a rush to sort of they are. find it. And they haven't yeah. figured themselves out yet. You know, true. They barely figured themselves out yet. They haven't really got their career sorted out. Like they haven't got like a, like financial stability with themselves. It's like, take your time, man. Like, relax for a minute. Right. Like, well, not not relax, but work on the right things. You know. Yes, and, and I seem to get a lot of guys interested in that apprenticeship and outside of the apprenticeship. In that, uh, I've really focused on improving myself physically and mentally for at least the last eight, nine years. And uh, I'm uh, 57 years old and two months I'll be 58. So I, I keep myself in really good shape. And a lot of guys <laughs> don't think I'm very old, but when they realize the experience I have, they really want to know why and how and what, how I've done that. And uh, I'm glad to share it with them. And some of the lifestyle uh, coaching that I give is on how to achieve it and how to create that durable mindset where you're really the center of your universe. And by being the center of your own universe, you're after lifting everybody up around you. If you do it correctly, it's not being an ass. It's being thoughtful is really yeah. what it is. A little more Zen like. That's really, so it's, I get a lot of guys asking. That's really like the, the father figure in you coming out right there. Like being that. <laughs> Papa <laughs> Thor, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. Being that, 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 that leader who like brings everyone else up, up around them and like takes responsibility. That's very much a father figure, uh, uh uh, kind of template, I think. It uh, could be, yeah. Stephanie Otto, Otto, right? Yeah, we're exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, <laughs> you on this Red Bull uh, thank you very much, Danny. It's going to be fantastic. It is going to be fantastic. Thor is a very underutilized uh, resource in this, yeah. in this place, as far as I'm concerned. You know, it's very clear <laughs> that you know a hell of a lot about a lot. Uh, and I've been you know, around a long time. That's about it. I mean, well, that I'll tell you what, I. Guys like you, I learn a lot from. I really do. There's, It's a never-ending journey, and it's such a joy to see guys like you, Sterling, come up in this sphere and, and see that spark. It's really nice to see. Uh, another you. one's Jonathan MLD. He's really on a tear because he has mm -hmm. really stumbled on something where men are really in need right now of this knowledge. And so I like that. And some of this is it, I like because the – the social environment that it produces and that guys can become functional and understand how to become better men and yeah. their lives get better because of that. Right. And I, you said something when I was on the side of the road today, waiting for the tow truck, I was uh, listening in to the, uh, uh, um, <laughs> to the dude party this morning because John didn't want me on there. Cause I'm coming in from a phone. Uh, <laughs> but you said something on that, which I found really, uh, I thought was really insightful. Was it, uh, what like, what John's kind of created with that masculine empowerment, the masculine empowerment network, and his like body language mastery stuff, uh, you know, all this courses where he gets guys together for like seminars for like two, three weeks straight, and then he gets guys like you and me in to mentor them on very specific topics. He, he, you've, you've created this sort of what what used to be a men's club. Yes, you know? we don't have them anymore. We don't. Like, my fa my father is actually a uh, a Freemason. Yes. And, uh, and I didn't have a freaking clue what that was, what, you know, what that kind of club was about until, you know, until I got older. And like, and and then you start. It's weird. You watch uh, um, <laughs> watching shows like Mad Men. I don't know if you've ever seen if you've ever seen that. You just, there's various scenes where they where guys going are going to like the YMCA or they're going to like a, a, a cigar lounge or whatever. And it's just a purely men, male space where guys can pick each other's brain and and talk. And air out their problems in like in us in an environment where they know they're not going to be judged. Yes, and I think that's, that's critical, absolutely critical. And it's critical because as problem solvers, which is what we are at our core, tool users, problem solvers, it, when you can get around a space of men that you trust, you could throw some shit out there that you're thinking, and they can look you dead in the eye and they can say, Sterling. Yeah, you're kind of full of shit on this one, okay? You think about it that way, and then you can kind of get a realistic, you know what, I, I didn't consider that, or this, and then your approach is different, and you're even more successful. Now, I'm just using the example that they may say to you, holy shit, Sterling, you just stumbled on an idea we can all get behind. You right. need that too, right? And so, it's also, you're getting guys from, because you normally, like, 
yeah, sure, guys hang out with guys, right? But they're normally hanging out with them in terms of in a context which is like work or a sports team or, you know, like they're, they've, they've got some underlying like common thread. Whereas what with this, it's guys from very different walks of life, completely different countries, different age brackets. So you're getting a compl- like very different perspectives on an issue. So like, so yeah. it's just, I, I, it's only having been in it for like a quarter and like, you know, obviously only been in it and helping out. Very briefly. Yeah, no, we're really glad that you could see the dynamic that's going in, in there like that. Definitely. We need a men's club and we need shows like yours too, that show how expansive a man's life can be. And if he wants to chase his dreams, it's all out there. Everything's on the table, gentlemen, you know, yeah. You could be judgment free in some of these cases and and bounce your ideas off. And and that's important to remove some. We do very much hard attempt at checking our egos when we walk into those webinars for that purpose. And and it's hard for us guys to do that because we wrap our identities in in the ego uh, and and we'll stumble sometimes. And you'll see the generals kind of step on each other. But then. Every one of them's made the agreement. No, we'll step back and consider. And, and it's an amazing thing to watch because the guys actually do get some good benefit out of it. Oh, yeah. And, and, and in, in many cases, I see a lot of guys. And even when I was working teaching apprentice power linemen, many of them come from single mother households. And so their viewpoint on emotions and how to solve problems is a bit skewed for a man. So it makes yeah. it much more difficult for them. And in some cases, they overthink everything because they're they've been trained to be emotional about it they're they've been idealized by their mothers into being this perfect beta match psychologically and then released upon the world and the world the reality of it is it's really not that that is not the case right they get told like like to respond it it, the like stimulus or problem comes at them they've been taught like the first response should be emotion and then you interpret your solution through that emotion which is the right. feminine way of doing uh, the feminine yes. way of interpreting the world. Whereas men need to like see problem objectively and separate the emotion and handle it in a logical, rational way. And then they can assess the emotion. And then they can apply it. Yes, yes, yes. That That's an important skill set to learn too. And that's yeah. why stoicism fits very well, not universally, but it does fit very well in a space. And that's another reason women are attracted to stoic men. Oh yeah, done in the right way, quite considerably. Yeah. I mean, you that, you have some experience in portraying this, yeah. So you know, and you're right. It's going to be done in the right way. There's a few questions mm-hmm. in the chat. Where I get it, but I'll, I'll keep. I want to keep yeah. um, just like everyone who's watching. I will get to some of your questions. Uh, I want to stay on the stood for for a quick moment though. But you're right. Like stoicism, stoicism seems to get a bit of a bad rap these days for some reason. Um, you know, people people don't even in like you know this sort of red pill manosphere space, or whatever. Right? Like, there's a time and a place for being stoic. Mm-hmm. And typically that time and a place is when is when your woman is being like the opposite of stoic. <laughs> like yeah. when she's yeah. like running around like a chicken with the head cut off, you need to be the anchor. Like you need to be the tree that is grounded and rooted and has like deep roots so it won't it's like unwavering. Right. So I got I got something I want to add to that. This is important. And and where this came from, I'll tell you after I tell you. This is an axiom that was given to me. And it is when the shit hits the fan, a woman does not want an emotional man. No. That came from my wife <laughs> when she watched one of these red pill shows that was talking that she goes, well, it's obvious yeah. when the shit hits the fan, no woman wants an emotional man. Yeah. Like who, what, yeah. Like somebody's like, <laughs> you're asleep in bed. Someone's breaking in through the kitchen window. Like n- no woman wants a man who is like, yelling and screaming like like a child like terrified she wants In a guy circumstance really like yeah. grab the gun and go fucking sort it out mm-hmm. you know um there's a real quick question here i want to i want to yeah. jump in now. duffy <laughs> nice uh nice av- uh, avatar there for a start duffy uh hey man i don't know what to do i know we uh shouldn't have friends with women but, but i knew this girl since childhood should i cut her off if she doesn't want me to smash okay I'm not going to, I don't totally agree with the concept of not having female friends, to be perfectly honest. And I'll explain what I'm, what I mean. Uh, as long as you are like, as long as it's not a one way street, I think it's perfectly okay to have female friends. 
but what I mean by that is you need there needs to be a mutual exchange of value, and her value isn't isn't just being a, like because you got to understand like you're ex- she's getting what if she if you're her friend, she's getting everything she wants out of that uh, out of that uh, interaction. She's getting all your time and your attention, and if you unfor- if and I don't know your situation obviously, Duffy, if you are investing time and energy into her in the form of I don't know what what are some things that that a guy in the friend zone would normally do, like helping her move house, helping her set up, like put together some IKEA furniture, um, like I don't know, going around and setting up her Netflix account or some shit, right? Setting up her setting up her Wi-Fi. If you're investing time, energy into her and doing this stuff for her, and like you're not having sex with her, she is you. You, in the words of Patrice O'Neill, my friend, are a time hoe. You are being hoard out. Okay, and it sounds harsh, but that isn't the info. That is the, the reality of of you know male female dynamics. Now, however, if you know I have female friends and we like, I mean, yeah, we all have I have sex with basically all my female friends, but I also have them on this podcast, for example, and we chat and it's and like there's a okay, I'm getting something out of this, you're getting something out of this. There's a mutual exchange of value there, right? If the only value she is offering you is her like presence. Then, in my opinion, you're getting fucked. What do you think, Thor? I absolutely agree because it's got to be a mutual exchange that is acceptable to both parties, and there can be a relationship there. Call it what you will. Um, let's put it this way you just said if you're the guy that's going to setting up her Netflix accounts or bringing her this or that, let's say you went to the store and you picked up her something she asked you to pick up me up some bread because I'm busy or take her dog to the vet, you do that, and then she finds out you're sick and she brings you over chicken soup. And that's the kind of friendship you have. Sure. I think yeah, that's exactly. fine. But that's you good. know, good. if you if you want to lay pipe in her all the time and there's nothing coming back, but you have to do all this extra stuff for her, maybe you have to start being her Instagram photographer. It's not a healthy relationship, and that's not the kind of friendship you want. And and guys, yeah. I'll give you a tip. I mean, if, if you're living life and you uh, someone that you've grown up with as a child and you've remained friends with, it's a little bit different. They're more like siblings. You got to realize unless you have something in your head. But if you're out there making new friends and a girl tries to friends on you, you, in my opinion, you need to mode one and say, look, I just don't do girlfriends that I'm not sexually interested in. You know, I don't want to waste your time, but that's where I'm coming from. If that's not good enough for you, then we won't be friends. Yeah. If you're, if, if you're doing, if you're doing anything that is sort of helping her, attract men like you just described mm-hmm. like Instagram boyfriend shit you're getting played son sorry but you're getting fucking played you yeah, are that, getting pimped that, that was a great example you just gave yeah if you're if you're sick and she come if she came around if she if you're if you're sick and she came around and gave you and made you fucking chicken soup like yeah that's a, and, and, that's, and maybe you brought her eggs one day or, or, or took her dog to bed and you what? guys have great conversations occasionally sure why not yeah I don't think there's like like there's, I, I, I agree that men need to be like more. Men need to be uh, um, need to have male space, right? Where they're around other men most of the time. I think that's like that's natural sort of state for guys, and we've kind of missed that. We've sort of gotten rid of that in in the Western world. Yeah, Which, like male exclusive places where guys can just be guys around each other and do things together, like. Build a fucking car. I don't know. Put together, do a bar, raise a barn. Whatever, the, <laughs> whatever the hell. Yeah. Gonna be, right? And I, I think the friends thing can be extrapolated a little differently too. It, you don't want to be her girlfriend, if, and that's how she would be treating you. Yeah. With the attention and all that stuff. That's that's not for us as men. That's yeah. not our place. I mean, I could have that neighbor that I take the dog to the vet, and she brings me chicken soup. That's a different, lower kind of level of friendship. Mm. as just human being to human being and you should actually have some of that in your life otherwise you're not experiencing life as you should you need those kinds of friends on that lower order that is mutual you have mutual exchange with and respect as a human being male or female you probably have some male friends like that and then you have that next order and then sterling you get that inner circle that's that's a big deal right there right yeah but yeah, and male need those those friends. They need that friendship and they need that male space to be able to learn to get those guys in their inner circle like you were alluding to. Yeah. And if uh, if you if you if you kind of follow the mantra of like no female friends, then you're never really going to get in like 
uh, other than trying to seduce women, you're never really going to get intera like experience interacting with women. No, like, and there's some real joy to be had there, especially if you take it playfully. Well, yeah, and and it's like it's been you. The only way you're going to really learn how like women think and operate and and uh, uh, and function is by being around them. Like you can't read it in a textbook. Like you yeah. can't, you can't like, I mean, as much as guys like us can, can sort of teach younger dudes. Okay. Well, this is kind of like how, like, these are some truisms you need to sort of have tactile experience with it. And yes, like, like seducing women and having sex with them and getting into relationships with them is one way of doing that. So that's but really uh, interesting. Having like having a social circle of, of, uh, of female friends that you take to the club or something, you know what I mean? Like guys who are like, uh, um, Club promoters. I mean, they're probably banging all the chicks they, they take to clubs anyway, but you get what I'm going with this. Sure. Yeah. Now, now you've come to the red pill in the last few years. You, you've probably been pretty savvy knowing your background with female and male interdynamics. You know, I notice a lot of guys come about the red pill in a, a trauma situation where they've had been deeply hurt. Hmm. And, you know, when you've been deeply hurt, you get some scar tissue and you lash out. I see a lot of that lingering with a lot of our, our group too, which I think has to be you have to kind of grieve through that and get past it. And when you do, you really get an appreciation for women. You don't have that kind of, no, I'll never do this. No, I'll never do that. You're a this, you're a that. Yeah, you can, you can know them. You don't have to trust them, but you can appreciate them for what they are. Yeah. It's bigger. a pretty good thing. Yeah. For what they are. Exactly. Like, and not expecting them to be something that they're not. Yeah. And that's really unfair that we're trying to do that. Yeah, and that's where, that's, where, that's where I think that's where most of the bitterness comes from. It does in this space is like guys have been we've basically been brain brainwashed from day one to believe something that isn't true, yeah. and that men and women are basically exactly the same, and like we think the same, and we act the same, and we have the same motives. This is just not the case. So, like, you know, once you're coming out of once you've been red pilled or whatever, once you've come to this realization, yeah, there's going to be a bit of like initially, of course, there's going to be a bit of resentment there because like mother. I've been lied to my entire life. Okay, whatever. But then you, once you accept it, you're like, all right, well, this is th like, I'm not, I don't, I like tiger got stripes, man. I'm not going to expect a woman to be something she's not. I'm not going to expect her to act like a man. Yeah. And, and, and think and, 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 uh, you know, rationalize and have the same motivations as a man. So I can then structure my life in a way that is uh, congruent with reality. And I'm going to be a lot happier because of it. You are, and they and they've been brainwashed to act like men too, and it's killing them. You can watch it. You can watch it in real life, Sterling. You have a front row seat. We're going to have to watch them play all this out because they kind of mostly, at least the majority, come this way from the factory, <laughs> yeah. and they're playing the program out right. Um, that it's really. I'm really glad you brought that up because I, I I had a chat with my very good friend uh, yesterday, Tom Umar Hunter. He is he's known me. We, we're like best friends. We've, we've known each other for over a decade now. And uh, when we both watched each other sort of go through, uh, go, we both got watch each other go from being guys who had troubles with women to now being where we are. And it's, it's mm -hmm. quite interesting, but we said, we both came to the same conclusion that where it's like, cause I've had a few people, honestly, I've had a few people, uh, leave comments or message me in private about, you know, the, this show and some of the things I've been saying. Cause I've, you know, I've had segments where I've like laughed and made fun of like my co-stars and, they've they've uh taken from that that i they've assumed from that that i hate women oh, and this, yeah. this is not the case i want to make this perfectly clear i don't hate women okay <laughs> i wouldn't be able to work with them i would be able to do i would not be able to do the job i do if i hated women for a start but, no. I, but I accept i accept them for what they are i do not see them as these flawless perfect beings because nobody is I don't pedestal right. them just because I can point out the flaws in their logic because I can just because I can point out, you know, some of the mistakes they might be making or the um, their their lack of understanding about their own nature doesn't mean I hate them. I'm just pointing out, you know, to what to me is uh, what to me I find as uh, something that's quite humorous and, and, and uh, entertaining, at least for me, you know? Yeah. But well, you're but, gonna you're gonna get some of that. You're gonna get some actual haters. I mean, I do too. Oh. Just by association, not anything I've said or done. Just by mere association, I hate women. Oh, as far as things from the truth, I love women. I think women are fan fucking tastic. Sorry about my language, but they are. 
they bring a lot of joy and insight into my life. And it has, has that come with at a cost? Well, hell yeah, it has, but I'll pay it every time. Uh, now that I have an understanding that that meets my needs and, and gives me uh, an ability to make, to make their needs too. It's amazing when you have that understanding, how, how much more fun they have with you and how they're willing, they're willing to follow you when you will lead with that in mind yeah. that you have these truths and, and, Look, you don't have to be an asshole about it. Just do it. Exactly. That's what they want you to do. And there's something else I wanted to touch on really quickly, which is like, yeah. as, as much as guys have been, like men have been brainwashed in like the Western world to believe bullshit. So have the women. Badly. Ba really badly. And it's, and it's actually more tragic when you think about it for women, because we at least have time on our side, you know? Oh, like, I know it. Like it took me like, a good 10 years or so to like unplug my shitty conditioning from like childhood to get to the point where I am. Right. A woman doesn't have that luxury of time, unfortunately. Like, so by the time all. when a woman gets to like, and, and maybe you could talk, uh, I'll, I'll say what I'm, I'll finish this point. Maybe you can talk briefly about your experience recently on that podcast. You told me about mm -hmm. but like a woman, a woman gets to like 29, like 28, 29, 30, and then she starts having these realizations of like, oh shit, I I would like to settle down and and find a man to, to partner with and stuff. But she's spent her whole life on. She's been told you need a career and you need to you know work a nine to five and climb a corporate ladder and and do all these things. And it's like, and then she has trouble finding a long term partner who, uh, you know, she genuinely finds attractive or she you know who meets her standards, right? And I think Myron Gaines talks about this a lot when he he references this uh, female like matchmaking coach. Who quit because she couldn't find, <laughs> she couldn't find, uh, she couldn't meet the standards of a lot of the women that she she had as clients. Yes, you know? and you had a you had an experience that kind of parallels to this recently. Yeah, it kind of does a little bit. It, it's a very common experience. I mean, most of the women, I would say, right through their mid forties, if not a little later than that, have been conditioned that the. To, the way to attract a man is to be this all powerful woman that can do everything a man can do. Yeah. Whereas if you and I were to think about it, it would be that woman that can do the best female or the most female or an alpha female. An alpha female is not a masculine female. If you think about it, it's the most feminine female. So yeah. they're being taught something that really doesn't meet their, how they were built or what drives them or the factory programming once again uh, on, on what was successful for them uh, sexually over the last million years. Um, the approach is they want to be more manlike to create this career. And, and can they do it? Yes, they can. They're smart. They can do all of those things. But is it attractive to the type of mate they want to have? And here's where the programming is really, really thick. And it, it, it invades all of us. We're here for two purposes. One is to survive and one is to procreate. And in order to procreate, we have to follow a sexual strategy to get the best mate possible. And, and females have really done this successfully. Uh, they basically make men better by selecting the top men to breed with. And you can see this throughout nature. Uh, yeah. It's really interesting to see throughout nature because most of the mammals, except for us, you know, they, they have estrus in public. Everybody can see that they're receptive, but but humans don't. They conceal it. And this is a strategy so they can get the best genetics in a small population. So that set that aside. They're being taught and socially conditioned. You can have everything. you got all the time in the world. And yet this clock is ticking away. They reach their peak fertility sometime in their late teens to 23, and then it starts to wane. And so by the time they get in their late 20s, this is something that's actually starts hitting them. They have a career. They're moving along. The party days are behind them. They've had some fun. They had some experience, but there's this gnawing. And this gnawing is the universe saying, you are not following your purpose. A lot of these gals get depressed and they'll even say, I've lost my purpose. I don't know what I'm here for anymore. But you sure had fun partying and now you're in this late stage, right? How come I can't find a guy right now? Well, Guy's instinct is to find the most fertile young female because that is the most successful that you can get pregnant and procreate and produce your offspring, right? So for guys like you, you're reaching your absolute peak because imagine this. 
as a caveman, you'd be reaching your peak skill as a, as a mammoth or a saber tooth tiger hunter right now. And you mm. survived long enough to reach your mid thirties or longer. That meant you had skills. So that was a pre-selection for you that you could have sexy sons that could survive. And so those young females would pile around for that very reason, because their children could survive. Uh, they don't want to take a chance on them not surviving. So this is a very strong drive and it's not well understood in the population today. And they get to the thirties and it's, it's a, it's a very tough choice. They will accept a lesser man that has some alpha qualities or has some, some um, situational alpha qualities. And she can stake her claim on that and live with it for a long time. But as attraction wanes in a, in a relationship, this is where men really need to take charge because you have to maintain attractiveness in your relationship to make it last. And mm. if you don't do that, even for a minute, the programming takes over in the female and she starts looking around and, you know, after the brain chemistry is all gone, she's looking for the next best genetics to pair up with. This happens all the time. It's why the women mostly file for divorce, right? Yeah. They get in their late thirties and they're just not attracted anymore. You know, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. How often have you heard that? And in the Western societies, we have a whole industry that's learned how to extract money from that very situation. Come to us counselors and we'll feed it and we'll do this. And then we have this divorce machine that takes care of the woman. So she's actually incentivized to enact this behavior instead of work through this and reclaim their attraction to each other and stick together. That's an unfortunate side effect is what's going on. And I, in a nutshell, that's kind of like the conversation I have with this young lady, a sweetheart. Yeah. Of a cow, but but going through this very similar scenario later in life is very difficult. Uh, there was a I had a, I had a friend who was uh, went and saw like a uh, she's 35. Went and, saw, went and saw like a uh, what would you call it? A year old? Just no, a uh, like a pregnancy doctor. Yeah, and and like the statistic, like the actual data, like I've and I've looked at, I, I've seen the data. It's like okay, well, like fertility rates in women decline quite exponentially, like after after like uh, was it like twenty like twenty five some of that like yes they do every, every year after that it drops the drop is uh, is like stepwise it's like bam 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 it goes down quite rapidly, and she went to this. Fertility doctor and the fertility doctor said, Oh, like she was 35. And a fertility doctor said to her, You've got plenty of time, don't worry. You'll, you want to, I'm like, and when she told me that, I was like, You've got to be fucking kidding me. This, this, a doctor just fucking lied to her face. And I'll tell you why they lied to her face because they want to fucking sell her artificial insemination. They want to upsell her on fucking artificial insemination. They want to, they want to upsell her on, uh, what was it called? Like the hormone therapy where they, um, they produce a bunch yeah. of eggs. I yes, yes, this. yes. I'm, I'm familiar with it. Yeah, they, cool. they use uh, human human gorionic tropin and and uh, clomiphene to increase the the amount of eggs that they drop. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it's like a fucking money. It's like a it's a money racket. Like, yeah, like the incentives a, are all wrong. A doctor is telling her that she is like a 35 year old woman that she's going to have no trouble getting pregnant. And I'm like, I, I'm like, That's how does right. you look at yourself in the mirror in the morning? You fucking liar. That is just absolute bullshit. You've told her a lie because you want her to fucking pay you a couple of hundred thousand dollars so she well, can people, do it. People buy that because, you know, people are really good at taking the exceptions to the rule and holding it as an invalidation of the rule, which is not true. And this is with every bit, every rule that falls Pareto's principle, you know. Mm -hmm. so Okay. So the doctor had one 50 year old woman that had twins because they shot them full of these drugs. Yeah. That's one out of how many thousands or hundreds or thousands or millions. Oh, but now I'm okay. No, that's not okay. Always play the odds when they're in your favor. That's how the gambling houses win. Yeah. And I know couples back in Australia, like friends, my, my sister's like seven years older than me. Right. So she, and I, and I know her friends and the couples and stuff. So I know couples in there, like, like late thirties who've done the artificial insemination thing. And it is a shitty process. It take it doesn't just instantly they get pregnant. It takes them fucking ages. Like yeah. when they're, when they're, when they're in their late thirties and not only that, okay, there's something else I want to touch on when you're talking about like what, uh, what men find attractive in a partner is that women have been taught, like you said, they've been taught to emulate like masculine traits, uh, 
when in re- and like reality, men like men find like submissive feminine women attractive. Mm-hmm. So there's no like so when a woman get is like pursuing a career, she gets to thirty, she's like wondering why can't I find a, a guy to part to partner down with long term. Well, it's probably because you're not being you're not a, you're not a submissive feminine woman, which is what he's actually attracted to. You're trying to be you're trying to butt heads with him and compete with him. He doesn't want you to compete with him. He wants you to to be on the same team as him. And that's and yeah, that's and they're, that, and they're not even cognizant of this. They don't know they're yeah. competing. They've been trained yeah. to do this. And, yes. and even in my interview uh, uh, with Christy um, earlier this week, she wasn't cognizant really that she was competing like that. But when I had mentioned, you know, if a man is going to lead and take care of all this, wouldn't you want it? And she immediately lit up. Yeah, that's what I want. Yeah. But she couldn't grasp the fact that, you know, she didn't have to take care of that. And it what and I, I framed it in such approach is it's not a guy coming in there and, 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 and ruling your life like master and slave. It's not that at all. It is a leadership function in which, yeah. you know, the best leaders in your life, Ever think about this, Sterling? And this goes for the man to woman relationship. They're the ones that you want to charge that front line in the face of fire for. They say go, and you're like, I'm going. I'm following you to the ends of hell because mm-hmm. you're that kind of leader. Yeah. That's yeah. that's very different than the leader that says, Crack the whip, bitch. I'm doing this. I'm doing it. And that's not what I'm talking about. It is the other kind of leadership. Hyper, I mean, women find that extremely attractive. Uh, and, and if you frame it in that way, they respond to it because instinctually they know that's what they're looking for. And, and, you know, I do feel very bad for them because when they hit baby rabies and they don't have that man, the purpose of the universe for them is slipping by and the universe rewards them when they have a, a, a family and a husband with a lot of things that us men don't get the same way they do. They actually do something that we can do with like, say dog that dogs do to us, which is unconditional love. They can do yeah. that for their children. Yeah. And very different. It's, it's a little different. I mean, I can say I unconditionally love my children, but it is so different for a mother and you can see that it's very fulfilling for them mm. and they know it because they get into their forties and they know the walls hit them and they've missed their opportunity. And it's kind of a very sad state to see because you know, they somewhat live vicariously through their children and can be very proud of it. And it's rewarding to them in ways I just can't describe. Oh yeah. You, know, you got to feel bad for them for that. I, uh, they've been sold a bill of goods. They made that choice and it's sad. Yeah. To give an example, I've, so both, both my, my, uh, my close friend, uh, Tom, Umar Hunter, and he, 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 uh, um, I think he went to his uh, grandmother's like 80th, 90th birthday. Yeah. It was it. Yeah. It was a birthday party. Um, a few months ago and i had a similar experience to this with my great auntie she had like a 99th birthday this was a few years ago and it was and we had like the whole family to get like so she's like the great great uh uh, auntie to me like and it was just it was literally it wasn't friends it was just family and you had about fucking 30 40 people there like all the cousins all the grandkids and it was just like I can't, I've never seen a woman happier yes. in my entire life than than my great auntie's 99th birthday when she could see all of her family there and everyone everyone and obviously everyone loved it to, loves it to death she's unfortunately passed away now uh, loved it to death and it was just like that I can't, like that is like that is someone who is content and uh, who on their deathbed uh, looks back on their life with with just pure joy. You know, that's someone who doesn't, that's someone who does not resent or regret their life. No, you have to wonder, you have to wonder, Sterling, think about it. They stop. I mean, they hit menopause right around between 45 and 55 and they stop producing eggs yet. They live as long as we do. They even longer. Right. So what has the universe purpose them for to do that? They're getting something. There's a benefit for that. Or they just drop and be gone and we'd keep the fertile ones around and keep going. Right. So there's a reason for that, and they're rewarded with that as they age. They are helping those young ones come through life, and it's an important role that they perform. Yeah. Um, and it, and if they don't have that, it, it's uh, the the cat lady thing. I don't think is quite as good, especially with the trichinosis part of it. So. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a that's a tricky piece. Um, yeah. Maybe uh, do you, do you still have a little bit more time, Phil? 
I got all the time you need, brother. Yeah. Let's uh, let's change tact a little bit because we went, we went on a really big uh, tangent that I, I actually didn't even, even intend on talking about, but it was but it, you know you're so knowledgeable on the topic it was really good anyway. But I wanted to uh, uh, get some of your worldly wisdom on the topic of uh, TRT testosterone re- testosterone replacement therapy because uh, to my knowledge at least you have you are you are quite uh, you know the uh, you, you've quite, got quite a lot of experience with it. You know what you're talking about. I've seen you. Uh, mentoring like and, and walking other guys through the process so maybe uh right. start going on like a, a rant about that for a bit sure i'd love to rant about that for a bit testosterone replacement therapy is a, is a medical treatment for several medical conditions usually it's hypogonadism primary or secondary or hypogonadism caused from an adenoma on the um uh, pituitary that uh, or it can actually be a misfunction of the lytic cells in the testicles where a man does not produce enough natural testosterone to be in a healthy range and it is unhealthy to be in a certain range uh and it's a very effective therapy that's been around for many many decades what what's out there right now about testosterone replacement therapy is some huge myths and misconceptions okay you talk to most people today and you they, they think testosterone replacement therapy is synonymous with steroid and performance enhancing drug use so if i'm a young guy i'm going to do trt it's used interchangeably with i'm going to get some steroids i'm going to be on a cycle i'm going to do performance enhancing drugs to look like my superhero thor so that is not what trt is not at all in any way shape or form what it is is using bioidentical hormones to pick your levels up to a uh, peak er uh, or a prime area, say like when you're 31 years old and you're at your absolute peak and you're producing the right amount of hormones for your body to be fully healthy, fully functional and protected. You know, testosterone is very protective of muscles. It is actually protective of blood vessels. Contrary to belief, it is protective of your heart. And also by that, Estrogen is also very protective of your bones. If you don't have that, you'll have problems with osteoporosis and it's neuroprotective as well. The key is not to have massive fluctuations of these in your bloodstream, but to have the right amount at the right time as if your body produced it. When you do that, everybody that's probably over 30 can look back maybe 10 years and say, man, when I was 21, I felt like this. I just don't feel the same. Yes, that's true. It's because these earth suits that we've been given to inhabit this realm, it wears out and you have to maintain it. And if you maintain it, you can maintain your peak performance forever. Keep that in mind. And then keep in mind, we're tool users. Testosterone replacement therapy is a tool that we can use to our advantage to extend our performance and our quality of life well into our 50s, 60s, 70s and 80s. As you know, I'm pretty old as it is, yet if you met me, you'd say, that guy's not that old. He does everything. He climbs 300-foot towers. He flies on helicopters. You know, he he, uh, he flirts with the ladies frequently. What the hell? You know? When the gym. Uh, <laughs> anytime, brother. <laughs> but I will tell you, I don't have anything special to do with that except that you know, about five and a half years ago, I was diagnosed with primary hypogonadism that was a resultant of an, an illness that I had. And I felt really bad and I had no energy. And I had brain fog. I had all these things. And because of that, it was so low that my primary physician said, we need to put you on right now to protect your heart. It is too low. Hmm. So they did. And then uh, I started to investigate. I didn't want to take any medication. I wanted to be a la natural. Okay. But guess what? Dying is natural, too. (laughs) Dying of an infection is completely natural. If you take the penicillin and survive, oh, your performance enhanced. That's completely unnatural. So that was a really, that was a crazy uh, philosophy break. And and why people think this way, I cannot understand at all. It's a cop out. So I started to really investigate this. And I I really did put a lot of effort. And I was fortunate enough to actually talk with several uh hormone replacement doctors. They used to call them anti-aging doctors, and now they call them regenerative medicine doctors or integrative medicine doctors. And the field has really, really advanced. And I am under the care of a rather famous doctor, 
that I'll tell you in private. He's there in Santa Monica, but he has actual movie stars and, and you know, athletes that he will help mm -hmm. with this issue. And uh, it's an amazing thing. Once you have the proper adjustments made due to your health markers, which is blood work, it's, 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 an, it's something you can add to your life when you're older and be about 50% of men lose testosterone, 50% don't. So if you don't need it, why would you do it? Right. And if, and, and as a young man, I will tell you this though, there is an issue with testosterone. It's falling across the board. And I'll get to that in a minute, but my, my rant on testosterone replacement therapy, it is designed so that you can maintain normal levels well into your elder age and have quality of life provided a professional medical uh, person is monitoring your health markers and making sure you get the medication you need when you need it. That's kind of it in a nutshell. Mm. Now, my issue with testosterone is that in both men and women, as it's been tracked in the last 50 years, has fallen 45% in men. And there's several reasons, reasons for this. And, and there is some strong speculation right now it's falling in women too, and it affects them severely because mm. they really do use testosterone the same way we do for libido for their musculature health, for healing. They need the right ratio for a woman and we need the right ratio for a man. Not only in testosterone, but estrogen too. You need both. It's a, it, it's a complicated issue, but these hormones literally do affect emotions and thinking at the lowest level. It's an amazing thing. I mean, we've all heard of roid rage, right? Mm -hmm. where, where I take all this testosterone. What's really happening there is you have this big spike in hormones and some of them are converted to these estrogens, which a male body's not used to. And they go way up and then they crash way down and you're kind of acting like a bitch that's on her period. That's the roid rage. So you, you need to become knowledgeable anytime you mess with your body in any fashion. And I'm sure you would agree with that as well. Now, as a true libertarian, I don't care what you do. Just don't hurt anybody else. If you want to exactly. do the other and you want to performance enhance, I'm a tool user to the end. You go use your tools, mister. <laughs> so, so that's kind of my philosophy on it. Why this testosterone has fallen. I'll just name one of the things they say it's environmental. I don't know, but there is effects that we're seeing societally. Mm -hmm. One of the things is in the last 25 years, they've decreased the blood count for total cholesterol lower and lower and now are giving more of the population these drugs called statins. Yep. And if you look at how they work, they work by lowering test natural testosterone production. This is a strange thing. Yep. Um, and they're being used prophylactically for heart disease. That means preventative. Yet the science to use it for prevention is not there. Now, if you already have heart disease and calcium buildup, of a certain kind, yes, these medications will save your life and you need it. Nobody's saying anything there, but there's ramifications that Big Pharma has put out there that we have not adjusted ourselves to, and we're seeing it in our society today. There's a lot of pussies out there that have, you know, a dick and balls. So <laughs> well, <laughs> it's something that should be considered on a large level. But yeah, I, I mean, I support guys that want to use these tools, just use them and be smart. I mean, you can really improve the quality of your life. As a young man in your 30s, it's unlikely you would have low testosterone. But if you're in the bottom quartile of the measurements today, you need to monitor it. You need to be 50% and above to be at peak functioning area. And that I'm telling you, that's the truth. And if you're not and you have symptoms, go to a specialist, not your general practitioner. Yes. And most of them don't take insurance. It doesn't matter. Pay for, yeah. you get what you pay for. Go and get it because your life will change for the better. I've gone and gotten. Uh, I think it, like every every year, or at least I think I think I tied it for, to about a year, maybe maybe two years. I try to go and get like a full blood panel. So just smart. To, just to monitor where I'm at. Because and, and here's the funny thing: in California, I could like this. I can't remember what the name of the place I went to was, but it was like five minutes down the road here in the valley. Mm -hmm. I like I walked in with like a custom like a list of tests that I wanted. It wasn't like one of their set panels they had a price for. I was like, look, I don't care what it costs. I want this, 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 and this. Can you do it? Yeah. Like, and he did, he wrote, that's the beauty of capitalism. I cannot do that in Australia. I cannot do that. In Australia, I have to, go, I have to get a doctor's permission to get us, like a, a doctor has to, to say, all right, you need this test for this reason. 
you don't like if I walked in and say, hey, I want I want, you know, these certain blood levels like I want my estradiol. I want my uh, I don't know, sex hormone binding globulin. I want my mm-hmm. prolactin levels. No, yeah. right. Important shit. Important shit. He would be he might be like, well, you don't, you're not at risk for heart disease. We don't need to measure that stuff. So you won't care. I'll care for you. Right there, like this. There's, there's pluses and minuses to this stuff, guys. I'm just, I'm, I'm just playing devil's advocate here. As a guy who has who grew up in Australia with free healthcare and then now lives in America, I can see that there's, there's definite downsides to the system you guys have here. There's a lot of things that are fucked up about it, but there is also a lot of things. If you've got a bit of cash, it's like, bingo. That's what. That's exactly what I want. That thing, and you can get it. Um, well, I'm amazed. That is such a smart move. It shows your intelligence level because I'll tell you this. I wish I had my measurements uh, from when I was 30 years old because it would have given me a baseline, whether I run high, mm-hmm. low on all of what you just mentioned and more. There's more to watch than just that. And that would give any doctor that I see now justification for modification of my hormones today. Whereas we have to mm-hmm. guess today what my peak levels were. I have to go by averages. And as you can tell, look at me, I'm slightly different than average. So. Yeah. <laughs> maybe lower in some areas and maybe more. So I literally paid for all of my children, I have four children to have full blood panels done when they mm-hmm. were in their late twenties and thirties, just for that reason to have that. Record. Nice. nice. Yeah. That's very, very smart. Um, you, I, I like that you talked about cholesterol levels from a second ago, because what most people don't realize is that uh, cholesterol is like, is the, is one of the building blocks for testosterone. It like is. Your body, takes the testosterone molecule and then it runs it through some enzymes and poof out comes testosterone so you you literally need it you literally need it to like to function properly and uh um you know we can can talk well i could go on about that i mean just in the last 20 years they lowered that number twice (laughs) so that more people would be on the medication like the the problems with the uh like american dietary guidelines is just fucking mind-boggling have you ever read i'm curious have you ever read any of uh um there's two books that i always recommend people to and one is uh the primal blueprint and the second one oh, is, is that, that's mark sisson's book it's mark sisson's book the primal blueprint mm-hmm. I, that, is, that is fantastic he, talk, he talks about all this stuff we just talked about obviously and a lot more the second one i i thoroughly recommend to people is uh called the ultramind solution by dr mark hyman I have not saw that one, but I will. I rec- I would highly recommend it. So he he has a really interesting approach. Uh, it's it's the it's the it's a practice called functional medicine, where it's basically like so the way the American medical system is set up is like insurance companies literally have like books with all the different like conditions and then a corresponding treatment or medication for each condition, right? So when you yeah. go in to your doctor. In, in, this, in the United States, you have to basically get the, the doc in order for your insurance to pay it, to pay the, the visit or to pay for the treatment. But the doctor has to basically diagnose you with a condition and then it has to correspond to a treatment or a medication, right? That's true. Everybody needs to know that. I did know that. And if yeah. you go to any GPs in America right now, you notice they pull out that that uh, computer. That's because it's on there. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they're pulling up. Uh, so actually, all the stuff, the stuff what I'm just about, what I'm about to talk about right now is actually not from Mark Hyman's book. It's from an, from another fantastic doctor you should read called Chris Cresser, uh, and the book is called I think it's called Is Functional Medicine, something like that. Damn, I'm, I really want to recommend that book to people because it's, it's if you want an insight into why the American uh, medical system is screwed, this book is 100 percent the book you need to read. Ah, uh, oh, dang it. When I wasn't didn't read it that long ago. I it, oh no 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 no. I read a lot of I, I listen to a lot of books in my Audible. Oh, uh, you are so you are so on the money though. That's why these functional medicine doctors and these uh, these mm-hmm. um, um, preventative medicine what they're calling our regenerative medicine doctors they are not in the insurance system now. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. And that's and that's the uh, yeah unconventional. Medicine by Chris Cresser. I'm gonna I'm gonna drop all I'm gonna drop these just because everyone's I want this to be like in the chat. So super drop, valuable though. Yeah, I mean it's it's it doesn't take you long to read this stuff, guys, and uh, it'll change your it, it's it's knowledge that everyone should have, in my opinion. Uh, unconventional. Yeah, uh, what else do we have? Uh, 
the primal yeah, blueprint, really cool. blueprint is yeah. fantastic and mm -hmm. uh, and then the ultra mind solution read these uh what i was uh, going on about with the uh, yeah so that's so that's how the medical system sort of works let's say you get compensated with insurance in america right now with the functional like and the problem with that is he, he gives a fantastic because chris cressa in uh, in unconventional medicine he's a, he's a fantastic analogy he said the way modern medicine works yes it is undoubtedly f like the best thing humanity has ever come up with for uh, uh for treating uh like what would you call like Shotgun, medical broken like, bones trauma broken bones open heart surgery like can't like removing brain tumors like this kind of stuff like we're brilliant at really brilliant at and people are like and like antibiotics and like stopping someone from dying from an infection like this we have to a t the problem that m uh, modern medicine has is uh, uh what do they call it it's like uh ongoing like inflammation and stress and like most of the conditions like modern conditions like like arthritis or depression or uh, uh inflammation like uh, various infl inflammatory diseases and things it's uh like this a chronic stress that's what i'm that's the one I'm looking for chronic chronic illness is yes. something that western medicine really struggles with and what he talks about with functional medicine uh functional medicine looks tries to treat the root of the problem Condi traditional western medicine is like like you're walking in a shoe with a pebble in it and you take an aspirin yeah pain the pebbles causing in your shoe right that is what modern western medicine the cyst that's kind of how it's set up so with functional medicine what they they look at is like oh why you where, where's the pain coming from all right take the shoe off get rid of the pebble right and it, what they do is they they start it's not and unfortunately you can't really get this stuff on insurance because it's not it doesn't fit the model so you have to it is it's more expensive but if you but you will what you will pay up front you will save over the course of your life but it's basically okay well here's the here's the, the symptoms you've got let's do a they, they start off doing a full blood panel a dietary analysis a lifestyle analysis they check like as they, they look as closely at you as an individual as they possibly can to see where things could be going wrong and then once they get the, all, the, all your blood work back and hormone levels back, then they can start customizing uh, um, basically a treatment for you. And be that maybe that's dietary, maybe it's to, maybe it's very extreme, and they do actually need to, to implement some specific medications. Yes. Or maybe it's like there's certain lifestyle things you could improve. For example, like getting more vitamin D. Might be it might be it, it, very often it's something as simple as like a lifestyle change. It will be. Uh, it will be that complex. Brilliant analogy. It will be that complex when they do. A protocol for you it will be vitamins minerals all all of that yes, yes. and dietary yes. changes absolutely uh thank you for the reminder there danny arnold uh everyone smash that like button because this yeah, smash it with your hammer guys helps it uh, helps it show up in uh, in the search results and if you are enjoying what we're, we're talking about right here don't forget to subscribe and uh, hit the notification bell as well so we can uh, get those numbers up we just cracked a thousand subscribers this morning so i'm very very oh, excited that's fantastic very, very very happy. we're well on our way to uh, to helping more and more people. A thousand. Does a thousand qualify you for super chats now? No, you have to get a certain. No, uh, someone asked in the chat earlier that I should uh, add super chats. I can't add super chats yet. I have to. There's two requirements for YouTube. You have to have a thousand subscribers, and I think it's like forty thousand hour watched hours on your content. Oh, we'll get that. So we're we're uh, we're about like halfway uh, to the forty thousand watched hours. So that's don't worry. I stream it every day. I'll get that easy. <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that number. No problem. <laughs> But yeah, that's uh, um, these so three. You, how, how'd your blood work come out? You're a good, strapping, healthy young lad, aren't you? Yeah. The one thing, and this is, uh, I actually, uh, when I did the blood test for the first time two years ago, back in England, the thing that I noticed, uh, and I kind of, I kind of went looking for. I was deliberately looking for something too because I had, and I talk about, I actually talk about this in my book because. One of the things uh, that people don't realize is uh, there's a compound in your brain called prolactin. And uh, when a man orgasms, right, the thing, the, the, we have a thing called the refractory period, right? So basically for men, that's the time you have to take off between orgasms, 
That is known as the refractory period. And that time frame is dictated by the amount of prolactin uh, in your brain. So when you orgasm, your brain releases prolactin and then causes the refractory period, right? Now, some guys have far more than others. Some guys have some guys have absolutely barely any, and they are quite literally multi-orgasmic. And they can, they can go bam, 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 right? So I... Uh, I, re- I I I was investigating this and read about this because I actually ha- like naturally I have quite a quite a, a long refractory period right, mm-hmm. and so obviously being in my line of work I was like how can I get this down like how can I push mm-hmm. this down so I can do my job better. And so this was two years ago, uh, um, yeah. So I found it. I knew what pro- I figured out what product it was. Did my blood work? Turns out it was a little bit higher than normal. So I actually jumped. I, I and then I went researching and I found like a supple. A, like peer reviewed scientific research on various uh, supplements that can actually lower the prolactin levels in your brain. Oh, that's uh, and, fantastic. Yeah. And help you to basically like reduce that refractory period. Not only does it reduce the refractory period, it also makes you hornier. So I take oh. this, my custom stack, I, I take it before, uh, before scenes every morning. So I'll pop. Oh, I got to get that. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe not. Maybe okay. not. Mrs. <laughs> Mrs. Thor might not need that. <laughs> <laughs> she won't be in trouble. Well, <laughs> you- Four times a day is just probably a little too much for her. I still need more. more. There you go. <laughs> I don't know how you find time for fixing power. Uh, 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 you got to throw a quickie in here or there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> well, if, uh, if anyone uh, – I, I can't see any more uh, questions in the chat here, uh, to be honest. So I think we might uh, we might wrap that up there, Thor. Okay. Because that was good. I, I'm, glad you t- I, I'm glad we got you in to touch on, like, the – the, the TRT stuff because anytime you see a lot and I like how you you phrased that uh, when you said you know um, like taking an aspirin is performance enhancing like l- look it's I think people make a big deal out of out of you know taking like TRT because they think it's cheating or something it's like well I mean yeah but like so's like so it's like air conditioning so is like what if, if you're dehydrated and drank some gatorade yeah like all this stuff Put is back in. Uh, look unle- un- unless you are like i try i always try not to be a hypocrite you know what i mean and like what's the what's the phrase for the bible yeah he was without sin cast the first stone that's probably like the first time i've ever quoted the bible in my life uh it, it but, good. maybe that's a second career for you brother maybe but <laughs> i get cast as a preacher quite a lot oh and, uh, here we go I actually have. I'm gonna have to look at some of that. <laughs> I have my very own. I get. I get cast as a Catholic priest so much. I have my own Catholic priest outfit. That is a what? legit. It's a legit outfit from CatholicSupplies.com.au. So I have one. Uh, um, <laughs> I always thought you were the stepdad type, you know. I, I also <laughs> am. Stepdad. I'm the stepdad. I'm the. I'm the. I get cast as a doctor <laughs> quite a lot because I'm articulate. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, and a teacher and uh, um, and a priest. Uh, where was I even going with that? Yeah, I try not to be a hypocrite. That's what I was trying to say. So, like, if you want to judge people, like, yeah, I understand that. Yeah, yeah, for the performance assay aspect, it's kind of it's kind of yeah. tough because you know, I mean, of course, we've all been fans, I assume, of something like the UFC, and they allowed TRT, which was a bioidentical hormone replacement to a certain level. Well, yeah. some guys figured out how to skirt it. So it became the scourge, yeah. right? I mean, we all remember TRT v- Vitor and then no TRT Vitor. Everybody <laughs> loves TRT Vitor. Yeah. But the reality of the situation is if you were within the so-called normal levels, you're actually more healthy. Straight. Yeah. yeah. And it's what your body produces on its own when it is healthy. Mm. That's what TRT is. And there's just a misconception about it. Is it cheating? I would not consider it cheating. And I don't know why we don't have, guess what? We have natural level convent events. Great. They're all tested. And then guys, mm-hmm. as uh, tool users of the human race, let's see some knockdown drag out pride style. Man, I would, I would love to see like. How far can we go? Like, <laughs> the, like the, I'll completely allow uh, um, like steroids in the Olympics. Let's just see what the human body can do. Think of it this way. It is going to benefit us all in the long run. It is going to raise that level because they are going to eventually discover something that yeah. doesn't have the side effects that prolongs our life. You know, those 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 cows and those dogs that have no myostatin in their body and they're buffed out hulks. 
Oh yeah, I've seen those pictures. Yeah, I've seen those pictures. They live longer than normal animals, and they Mm. don't know why. Yeah, so there's something there to look at. Yeah, I remember reading. I can't remember who's. It was someone's fitness book I read, and they talked a lot about the guy was like a pro bodybuilder, and he was also like he also had a physics degree. I can't. I wish I could remember this guy's name. He was. It was a fantastic book. Uh, but he talked a lot about myostatin, right? And uh, oh. and in particular, he talked about creatine's effect on myostatin. Mm-hmm. Um, and because in the book, he showed these pictures of like dissected rats, wh- yeah. and one one was where they basically like turned the gene off, and one was where they turned the gene on, and like yeah, like you had basically a buff rat versus like a regular rat. And then they also did this, they replicated the same stuff with uh, with like daily creatine uh, um, supplementation on the rats as well. And like, yeah, so there's some connection, but I, I'm, I'm not going to try and pretend like I can remember exactly what the connection was, but there's a connection between creatine supplementation and myostatin. Uh, creatine is a very good supplement. It is neuroprotective as well. It's very well studied. Yeah. Uh, it's not the magic pill, but it, you get a lot of it in your meats, by the way. So yeah. it's something we need. Yeah. More reason to eat red meat. Don't be a fucking vegan. God damn it. <laughs> I don't know if you saw. Were you, were you watching the show I did the other week where I had there was a a, a tweet from a girl in my industry. Uh, she was like, "I'm looking like taking boyfriend applications now." Ah, you see that? No, what, was it, what, what, what was what was her requirement? So her requirement was that you'd be vegan. Oh, she probably <laughs> messed it. I bet she misspelled. She meant vaginatarian. I'm sorry. <laughs> Not vegan, right? Vaginatarian, because that's just, what I am. It was just funny. All the guys like under the, like dropping pictures of themselves underneath the thread, being like, "Oh, I'm not a vegan, but I'm willing to be." I'm like, "Pussy, <laughs> don't <laughs> eat damn red meat." Oh, yeah. <laughs> <For anything>. well, <laughs> if they ask you if you're a vegan, say, "I am a vaginatarian." Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I think that's a good place to 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 wrap things up. Well, good. Uh, thank you so much once again for for joining me tonight. And uh, and we will reschedule, and I will eventually make it out to your house, and we'll go shooting, and, no uh, and running Harleys and stuff. But that was not that. But that is not today, unfortunately. <laughs> so don't forget well, this uh, podcast again sometime in the future when you're a big famous guy, right? Absolutely, mate. Um, well, I'm already a big famous guy, just just not on YouTube. Different tube site. Yeah, that's Different tube site. Cool. Uh, <laughs> make sure you hit the like button. Give us a subscribe. Hit the notification bell at the same time. Uh, and if you're watching on Twitch, give us a follow on Twitch. And uh, where can everyone find you, Thor? What's the best place for them to c- get more of your information? I, I do have a YouTube channel. It's uh, Red Pill Thor, and I have some content there. And I can be reached uh, by DM at uh, Red Pill Thor Instagram, and Excellent. that's where I'm available for men's lifestyle uh, advisement. There we go. All right. Everyone, you have a fantastic uh, Saturday night or day, depending upon 